Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be installing Kali Linux version 22.1 in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we get started, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For RAM, the lowest that you can have is two gigs of RAM, four is recommended. For disk space, you're gonna want at least 20 gigs of hard disk space, two CPU cores, the Kali Linux ISO image file. You need VirtualBox and the extension pack. Now, if you don't have that installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to grow my channel as big as possible to reach as many users as I can. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at getting this installed. So we're at our desktop and I'm gonna open up my browser and I'm gonna be going over to Google and I'm gonna search for Kali, Kali Linux. And Kali.org is the official URL. We'll just go over here. And I'm gonna click on the download option and it's gonna give us quite a few options here to choose from. We're gonna be doing the bare metal. Now you can also get a virtualized version for this. I've had some issues with it in the past, but I, so that's why I'm gonna be using bare metal. But if you wanna go ahead and try that out, the installation is gonna be very similar. I'm gonna click on this. It's gonna bring us down to the bare metal section. So the version that we're gonna be installing is Kali Linux 2022.1. And we're gonna be downloading the 64-bit version. And as you can see, the installer is right here. And this is gonna download the ISO image file. So we'll just click on that and let it download. The size of the file is 2.8 gigs. So what we'll do is we'll skip over to the part where this is already downloaded. So we have the ISO image file downloaded right now. You can see it's completed. And you wanna make sure you know where you have this downloaded because you're gonna to have to point to it later. I have mine in my downloads folder, so I know exactly where it is, which is great. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize these right now. And I'm gonna open my VirtualBox Manager. Inside the VirtualBox Manager, we're gonna click on the new button. And in here, we're gonna give it a name. The machine folder, we're gonna leave as default. The type, we're gonna leave as Linux. And in the version, you can select Debian 64-bit because that's what it's based on, and then click on Next. So inside RAM, the minimum for RAM is two gigs. Anything over four is gonna do you better. It's just gonna run more smoother. So I recommend four gigs or greater. Then click on Next. We're gonna leave the Create a Virtual Disk Now option selected, and then click on Create. VDI is fine right now, so we'll leave that as is and click on next. Dynamically allocated is fine, we'll click on next. And for disk space, you need to have at least 20 gigs available. I'll put in 30 here, but 20 gigs is the minimum. And then you click on create. So you can see over here on the left-hand side, we have the virtual machine now created. We're gonna do a, sm a few small modifications. So we wanna make sure it's selected in blue and then click on the settings button. And inside here under general, we're not doing anything in here, but under system, over here in the memory section, four gigs is what we have selected, which is great. If you wanna give more in this green space, you can go ahead and do that. Under processors, you only do need one CPU. The more CPUs you have allocated, the more smoother it runs. So I'm gonna max mine out to four. Inside display, we're gonna max out the video memory. Again, this is gonna make a significant change. It'll just look smoother on your display. And then under storage, this is the most important component. You wanna select the empty disk over here, and then the disk over here on the right-hand side, and choose a disk file. Now we need to point to the ISO image file that we had just downloaded, which I have right over here. So I'm gonna select that and then click on open. So that's good to go. We have everything done. If you wanna make any other changes to this virtual machine, you can do that in here. And then when you're done, you can click on okay. We're ready to start this virtual machine. So we have it selected on the left-hand side and we can click on the green start button over here and it's gonna begin the installation. So we get a menu and what we can do is we're gonna be doing the graphical installation. Uh, you do have other options here if you want to select that, but for, for this installation, we'll be doing the first options. So we'll have it selected and then hit enter on your keyboard. In this installation, I'm going to be using a lot of the default North American settings. If you want to customize this to your region, you, you can go very specific to your region right now and select the language and settings for that. But for this example, we'll be doing English in the United States settings. So I'll have English selected over here, then I click on continue. And for the location, I'll be leaving it as United States and then click on continue. The configuration of the keyboard will be American English and then click on continue. For host name, we're going to be leaving it as the default name there. Um, Kali, you can put whatever you'd like there, but we'll leave it as default and click on continue. Domain name, we're gonna be leaving as blank and then click on continue. And now we're gonna be adding a user to this configuration right now. So I'm just gonna give it a name and then click on continue. And it'll use that as a username as well. And now we're gonna be setting up a password. So you can go ahead and type in an alphanumeric password here. Once you have your password in, you can click on continue. For the region for your clock, you can select whichever time zone you're in. I'm gonna leave mine as Eastern and then click on continue. So we'll be leaving the default option as use guided as guided use entire disk. Click on continue. 
and we'll be leaving the first option here selected and then clicking on continue. And this is all fine. We're gonna leave it all in one partition, click on continue. And now we're ready to write changes to the disk. So we'll click on continue and we're ready to write changes. So we wanna select yes and then click on continue. So now it's gonna install the operating system. This part might take a few minutes. So what I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. So just a few more steps here. Uh, we're gonna be leaving the desktop environment and all these options as default. If you wanna go ahead and install other packages, you can go and do so. What we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna click on continue and it's gonna install those packages we had selected. So now we're just gonna click on continue and we're gonna select the virtual drive right over here and click on continue. Okay, so the installation is now complete. We're gonna click on continue to reboot the system. Okay, so we've just booted back up into the operating system. We're gonna type in our username and password. We're gonna hit enter and it's gonna sign us in. And here we go. We just installed Kali Linux 2022.1 in VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. If you go over here to the menu up here on the top right, left hand corner, you have all the built in software for testing your network and intrusion prevention and uh, exploits and everything else that you need Kali Linux for. But that's it. So if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.